Salisbury, 2 a.m. Mount Barker, 4 p.m. Wherever, whenever you're unfortunate enough to have an accident, one crash repairer provides a free pickup, quote, and delivery service 24 hours a day, seven days a week. JV Crash. And with JV Crash, you have the benefit of over 20 years' experience, all the very latest technology, and a good, reliable loan car, free. JV Crash, for a perfect job every time. Yes, I'm right down with uh, Peter Holmes uh, on the front of the grid for the HQ race, JV Crash Repairs, and JV Crash Repairs, of course, your sponsor, Peter, so very appropriate, you're going to lead them away for the first opening session of this 1993 Australian Grand Prix meeting. That's right. And you're uh, also hoping to do a little bit better than perhaps the three-hour race last weekend. Yes, that's right. Uh, the boys have been working hard since we got back on Monday night. We had a little incident and hit the wall, and um, the boys have been working till late at night every night to get the car back on the grid. Well, I reckon it's a fantastic uh, job. It's a fantastic advertisement for the sponsor of this race and your sponsor. I mean, that was Sunday night in Melbourne. This is Thursday morning in Adelaide, and the car is looking resplendent. That's right. They've done a brilliant job, and I'd like to thank uh, JV Crash for doing uh, such a fast and good job. Well, I think it's fantastic, and of course the HQs are great fun here at the Adelaide Circuit, and uh, you get the job of uh, cleaning all the rubbish off the circuit. <laughs> yeah, not a job I'd really like to do, but it's got to be done. Well, you've got to get pretty uh, quickly into it, because you've got your race this afternoon, so uh, you've got to really get your set up uh, right first off. That's right, that's right. We've just got to suss the track out a bit uh, on the first lap, see how slippery it is, and then get into it. And, well, we can only uh, wish you all the best for the race and I uh, hope you do uh, tremendously in this session and get yourself right up the front for the race this afternoon. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Well, we'll move ver very quickly back to, in fact, uh, another one of the JV cash Crash Repair cars, Steve Monteresso. And, Steve, now, you, you were at uh, Calder last weekend also, weren't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we were there. And you had a slightly better run than uh, than Peter in front of you? Yeah, a little bit better run, but me and Pete actually drove that vehicle, uh, yep. car number nine, and uh, two other guys, Steve Ward and Anthony Cavallo, drove this car, and they brought the car home in one piece. Yes, well, that would have been a little bit easy. I mean, it wouldn't have been any good if you'd had uh, two cars to repair in four days. No, that's right. There was a lot of work done on uh, Peter's car, and, uh, and we thank JV Crash for... Uh, getting it ready for us and uh, and the boys to put it all back together again. Yeah, well, I think it's tremendous. Uh, we've got to get off the uh, grid now, so I wish you all the best uh, for this session and the race this afternoon. Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much. Well, we've got the cars already lined up on the circuit for the practice, the first event here at the uh, the Grand Prix track this morning. And Paul Ryan, they look very impressive as we look down the grid and go right back to the southern hairpin. Well, they certainly do, Tony. A packed field of 39 cars for this event. And it uh, will be very int interesting to see with uh, slightly grey skies above. These guys only have a 20-minute qualifying session, so they'd be pretty keen to get, uh, get a time down early. They certainly would, and if you look back just five years ago, HQs were only just starting down there in Tasmania, and they caused a real riot down there. They uh, attract little fields of at least 40 or more to local meetings, and at the present moment, there are some 535 long books issued for HQ Holdens. I think that tells us something about HQs. Well, you've only got to look at uh, this event here, 40 local cars, uh, and the HQ race that was held at Bathurst this year. They had uh, almost 100 cars competing up there, so the popularity of the class is tremendous, mainly because um, it is such a, well, there's really no such thing as cheap motorsport, but um, it is a very inexpensive and fun way to go racing. Looking somewhere between seven and uh, perhaps 20,000 uh, for one of these cars, depending upon just how far they go as we get the green flag and they go on the, uh, the warm-up lap. The first cars to turn a wheel on the circuit here at the Grand Prix circuit for 1993. Of course, these have got six-cylinder engines. They have a controlled camshaft. They've maximum valve size. You're not allowed to do any work on the uh, heads at all. It's the original three-speed gearbox. And there are no fancy items like uh, limited slip diffs or anything of that. 
They all run on those Goodyear Decaro tyres from North Terrace Tyres. And the uh, the wheels are seven or eight steel or magnesium wheels, so there's nothing really fancy about the running gear as we got one already in trouble right down the back. It's the it's the uh, Ian Richards car, the uh, cab charge machine. It doesn't look, uh, it looks to have started at the back of the field and got around the hairpin um, and turned it around, but although Ian is now underway, and of course a former Formula 2 national champion now competing in the HQ class, gets away now the last car on the grid. Well, we've got smoke cars spread out well over the circuit. Uh, we can see them going through a banana bin at the present moment, and they're hooking around there fairly quickly. That'd be a fairly wide part of the uh, circuit for the HQs to be able to slip around there before they get the hard right hand. Still the two JV, JV crash cars of Holmes. Holmes is the, is the lead car now as they head down Brabham Strait for the first time. David Lyons there. Certainly as they go down there, Paul, they get a long stretch down there and really be able to wind those uh, things up before they wind them back. And the traffic coming on to, uh, to Babram Strait now, they're all starting to, uh, to come onto that section of the track and they'll wind them up down there and then have to wind them in very tight as they get round the right-hander. We're so used in the road traffic conditions to go round that island at uh, Kensington Road, but that's a very right hand, a very tight right-hander, Paul. It is very tight. I actually had a chance to uh, have a look around the circuit last night. It's very interesting to see how tight it uh, it really is you can uh, get a totally different perspective actually sort of driving around the track but uh, the interesting thing in this HQ session and in the race this afternoon is the HQs with drum brakes all around uh, after a while they tend to get just a little bit sloppy on the brakes and areas such as the end of uh, the end of Brabham Strait and the, the hairpin now that uh, the cars are exiting we could see some pretty frantic action by the uh, the end of the afternoon well we certainly will they'll work those brakes very hard at the end of Brabham Strait then I've got to come back into Wakefield Road into the race course entry and then up to the uh, the hairpin on the southern end of the circuit and the lead car already around there under the Foster's bridge, bridge and going down through that chicane and of course we're going to get a lot of action uh, down there in the chicane. You see uh, see a lot of uh, one car spun down at, uh, at the, at the 40, car 45 that is, Giovanni Chikachopo has been uh, a new competitor at HQ Racing this year and he'll be uh, disappointed to uh, turn the car around early in the event before he's actually got a timed lap on the board. Yeah, that's down at the Bolt House uh, corner that he spun down there, but he's managed to uh, to get everything away all right. So it's still car number nine, that freshly repaired machine of, uh, of Peter Holmes. As Tom Norton, uh, as he, sp he spoke to Tom Norton uh, before the start of this qualifying session, competed in the three-hour enduro at uh, Calder Park last weekend. And if... Uh, Certainly that would be uh, a real test of brakes. Three hours in a HQ should be um, a uh, pretty, uh, I suppose, despite the fact that he crashed it, it would be a lot of work would need to go on to prepare the car for this weekend, regardless of uh, whether you bounce the thing off a wall or not. Certainly is, and we have a look. Uh, the car's spreading well and truly over the circuit now as they're going completely round in the, uh, the 19 car is the Brenton Forest in the, uh, the white car. We've got the... Uh, one of the uh, Gilbert Motorbodies cars in the uh, the pit lane already with the uh, the bonnet up, I think. So Ca it. Car 17, Alan McFarlane. Alan, yep. David Lyons has now uh, zipped past Peter Holmes. Now, Lyons was the winner of the HQ Master of Malala event a, just a couple of weeks a uh, couple of weeks ago, and he was uh, drove a very clever race at that event, uh, conserved the car early, and really come through with a strong run at the finish makes his way down to the racetrack hairpin to, uh, for the second time. And as we see them coming down the pit straight, these pictures are coming to us courtesy of the Nine Network and your GPFM TV commentators are Tony Grove and Paul Ryan. OK, fastest lap so far has gone to car number 25, John Pengelly. Time of 2.12.70, slightly, uh, it's probably a little bit, a uh, little bit under a minute slower than the Formula Ones will be going around the track, but still, uh, certainly getting around there pretty quickly for a uh, for a HQ Holden. A lot of dust down there in the chicane, Paul. As uh, you would have heard Tom talking to the uh, the front runner there, a lot of dust to get off this track. And these cars, although the track has been swept, these cars are the first racing cars trying to get some rubber down on the, uh, the circuit and get a line established 
certainly later on this afternoon when they have the race there will be some other cars that have practiced and uh, they'll get a better run at the uh, the present moment and we would expect the times to get quicker as the rubber goes down mm. david Lyons second fastest today his time at 213.45 next up we've got car two steve Monterosso with a 213.777 car 65 is next kim gray another one of the leading front runners from malala his time 214.44 then it's back to car nine, that uh, uh, repaired car of Peter Holmes with a 214.74. And then car six, which is Peter Ormsby, which is one of his uh, first meetings back this year for Pete, has been uh, a regular front runner in the past. We haven't seen a lot of him at uh, Malala this year, but uh, his time at 214.86. One thing I find very interesting is to have a look at the suspension of these cars and compare them with the Formula One, how the Formula One cars will clatter around the track. Everything is so tight and so high tech whereas the HQs just seem to be rolling along, don't they? They certainly do, and uh, as we say, the suspension isn't as tight as we have one going straight on at the end of uh, Brabham Straight, that would be. Anthony Cavallo there. Yeah, so uh, he managed to miss anything and hooks back into the uh, traffic, but yes, as you're saying, Rob, quite different to a Formula One. Formula One very tight, and we see them bounce and bump, and uh, the sparks coming up across the titanium blocks when they're fully loaded, but uh, these guys really don't notice a lot of difference between full and empty, I don't think. Okay, let's check the times now as the uh, front runners make their way across the start finish stripe for the second of their, their really hot laps. 24, David Lyons has uh, dropped his times. In fact, 25 finds straight back. That's Pengelly at 2.11.58. So the times are starting to drop every lap as the track uh, becomes a little cleaner and the tyres and everything come up to, uh, come up to temperature. You'll find the times will drop further and further. The other thing, of course, we notice about these uh, HQs is that they're more inclined to use the, uh, well, not use the track edges, but bounce off the track edges more than the uh, the ones. It doesn't affect the suspension quite so much. And uh, we can see the tails sliding out as they go around the uh, the corners here, back onto the race course area particularly. Good performance here so far for Steve Ward. He's... Uh been, uh, actually, Steve broke his leg earlier, earlier in the season this year, and uh, it's good to see him back in the car. Didn't break the leg in the car, but uh, had to be uh, had to miss a couple of meetings. But uh, he's ended up with third fastest time so far, a 2.12.38. And uh, as we mentioned before, only a 20-minute session, uh, and this is the only session the HQs will get. So it's going to be pretty frantic action by uh, by the end of it, because a, uh, a front row or an early grid position in this event is going to be oh so important. Well, it's 3.8 kilometres around the uh, the circuit. The track record currently held by Peter Ginman at a 2.0859. So in that 20 minutes, certainly won't get a, a lot of laps here. And they're only going to get the one practice before the uh, the race this afternoon. So these fellas will certainly want to use all their uh, time out on the track and have a look at them nose to tail, foxing with each other as they come down Bradman Strait, looking for the different lines into that hard right hander there. And it's 65 who's leading through just at the present moment with a great group of uh, cars behind him. 65, of course, being uh, Kim Gray in the white car. But they're side by side as they come out of uh, Wakefield Road and get back onto that uh, race course proper and head towards the southern hairpin there. Too wide as they come in under the uh, the bridge and head up the back of the uh, the pits there, under the Marlborough Bridge. And who's going to break? We've got four and five cars as they come around past the Foster sign, side by side this time as they come into the southern hairpin. A group of four cars. Look at Halliday making up ground on the inside. Mike Ooh and doing a great job here, having a great battle there with uh, with Gray and Davin Harding also really trying to uh, get in amongst the action. Haven't they tidied up their driving techniques, uh, Paul, in the last, what, two, two and a half seasons? They've certainly uh, realised that all this body damage uh, isn't cheap to fix and it's time-consuming. And uh, they certainly want to fix it. We've just had a new best lap, Paul. That's right. Car number one, Bill Laxton's old 211.54. Bill was the top point scorer last year in HQ Racing uh, and also won the HQ Master of Malala. This year, he's found the competition a little tougher. The guys like... Uh, uh, Gary Holmes, Baxter was Holmes, one of the Gary Baxter, only an ex-motorcycle uh, boy who's uh, done extremely well. And, of course, we always have his fan club up there, don't we, on the mound just down from us, and they give him plenty of uh, support up there. I guess they'd be here having a look at him uh, in practice this morning. But, and we're not there Halliday. by Halliday in uh, 30 in the uh, McDonald's car. He's got the franchise for McDonald's, of course, down at uh, West Lakes, and he's had a lose. 
bit loose there, just waiting for the uh, the traffic to uh, to go by. That's one of the uh, oh, is really going to be one of the problem areas for the HQs. The two hairpins you see him there off at the start of the uh, the start finish straight, hard on the brakes. The HQs can get a little uh, a little uneasy, and I think you'll see a lot of action in this afternoon's race. I just must remind you too that this is not a race. What we're seeing out there now is not a race, believe it or not. This is the qualifying session. The theory is that you get a bit of space between yourself and the other traffic and just try to put down a nice clean, clean lap, the fastest lap you can possibly do for your lap time to get a time and a grid position in that race. But look at these guys, Hammer and Tom stuff. You talk about a clear lap and we had about eight or 10 coming out of the end of Brabham straight at that uh, time. And as we said, it's only a 20 minute session, so they've got a lot of work. They've got to try and get to clear and, and get a good lap. Uh, you see them come foxing, you'll see them come down Bram Strait, get a, a toe down there, and then try and uh, swing them out. And another large group coming up uh, under the Marlborough Bridge round the Fosters and into the Southern Hairpin once again. Everybody trying different lines. As we said, a, a lap, the record here at uh, 20859, it doesn't give you a lot of laps. Well, those times are certainly dropping now, Tony. We've got a great battle between car 24, David Lyons, and car 25, John Pengelly. This is a great performance from, from Pengelly. He's been one of the front runners this year, but uh, you wouldn't expect him to be holding the pole at this stage, a 209.8. So uh, that record is going to possibly take a bit of a pounding by the end of the day, as we've got one car into the tyre barriers. That looks to be uh, just at the entrance to uh, Victoria Park. That's at the, the same place where uh, Glenn Seaton crashed his Falcon in the touring car race last year. And yes. also Andrew Jarman. That's Andrew Jarman corner. 93 has also gone into the wall. That's Colin Zeitfield. Uh, he was one of the original movers for uh, HQs here in South Australia, along with uh, John Brownsey. So that's disappointing for uh, Colin Zeitfield to, uh, to touch the wall. Let's hope the damage isn't too serious, but it can't be repaired. Uh, certainly won't be repaired for this afternoon unless it's uh, very minor. Well, you've only got to look at the uh, the frantic action where they've repaired Peter Holmes' car in only three days. I think you'll find there'll be a lot of frantic work going on in the pits, and uh, you'd have to be uh, a pretty serious sort of accident to uh, uh, knock one of these guys out for the day. They'd be pretty keen to get some racing laps in this afternoon. All they have between now and five past five this afternoon to get there for the race. You know, wouldn't it be good to see celebrities in HQs? <laughs> They're still Holdens. <laughs> so uh, I think I'd prefer the Calibra somehow. <laughs> We've got one car coming into the pits. That's one of our uh, one of our female drivers in uh, HQs, Kerry Ann Ryan. One of two that we uh, have running in the uh, the field. So check the times now. 25 Pingilly still has the fastest lap at 209.8. Car 54 being uh, Peter Gimmon now, there we go, that name, uh, he really performed well here last year and he's now back into the action of 210.08. Next up, car 24, David Lyons with a 210.71, then Monorosso with a 210.77, then Holmes, car 9, 211.10, and then rounding out the top six, car 44, Chris Frost, another great performance there, although he has just been bumped out of that top six position replaced by car 60 Davin Harding so there's a lot of um, a lot of different performers uh, coming to the fore here at uh, the Adelaide Grand Prix circuit Tony some of the front runners who we see regularly up there at Malala are struggling a little bit and we've got a few surprise names coming up well I guess uh, a lot of it probably Paul depends on those who do a lot of practice become familiar with the track here at the Grand Prix of course it's once a year and uh, I guess it comes back to uh, to drive a school but certainly as you said we uh, see some cars in uh, positions perhaps we haven't expected them before. The likes of uh, the likes of Gary Baxter, who's regularly been a front runner and uh, up on the first row, is uh, not in the top six uh, at this stage, and he's just one of a number of leading contenders who uh, are just struggling a little bit uh, in this uh, early. Well, now the qualifying session is uh, really into its dying stages. Now, 14 minutes have been completed. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, we've uh, got six laps down at the, this stage, and uh, so they're not going to get a lot of laps in that uh, 20 minutes. As we said, it's uh, only 20 minutes. So uh, I should think at this stage I'll probably get somewhere around about eight or uh, nine laps. So uh, not much time, as we've said. Car 54 now has the fastest time. Peter Gimmon, it's, uh, he's really put the, put the pressure down now, a 209.07. 
So the pole man and the uh, the lap record holder, reigning lap record holder, is certainly coming to the fore again. The track now starting to clean up a little bit, and the tyres and brakes starting to uh, really starting to come up to proper racing temperature. Problems there for Kerry Ann Ryan, as we said earlier, into the pits, a blown head gasket. And that's disappointing. As we see Wayne Pink, car number 42, sponsored by Pink Spider 10, has had a minor off. And that looks to be at uh, virtually by Banana Bend up by the Stag Corner. And they've got five uh, minutes left of this practice, or four and a half now as I speak, so they'll only probably get about another two laps in. So uh, it's going to be very interesting to see who gets the uh, the final grid positions here for the JV HQ race this afternoon. Well, check the times again and the, as the uh, as the time ticks by. Car 23, Anthony Cavallo has put the pressure down with a 2.10.35. That's put him into fifth position so far. Fourth on the grid to date. Car 9, Peter Holm was with a 2.10.22. Car 24, David Lyons, third fastest, a 2.09.46. 25, Pengilly, a great performance there, a 2.09.24. And pole man so far, still three and a half minutes re remaining. Car 54, Peter Gimman with a 2.09.07. So with about four minutes uh, left to go, we've got the car starting to spread out and some of them will be looking now that a bit more rubber's gone onto the track. They'll be looking to, uh, to find that line and try in a very, uh, slip in a very uh, quick time. Watching them as they uh, go through Banana Bend there and they're using all that road down there as they head down to uh, towards the stag. Just having a look as they come back onto uh, the Hutt Street East Terrace sections, a, a group up there that are, are nose to, uh, to tail. Only three minutes remaining now, so uh, luckily for the HQ uh, HQ driver, drivers that uh, those grey skies have remained grey and haven't opened uh, opened up onto the track, they'd be uh, they'd be pretty pleased about that. I think uh, driving a HQ uh, around here in the wet would be uh, a pretty hairy little experience. It certainly would be, Paul. If they'd been here yesterday, they would have had a, a bit of. Uh of wet uh, traffic. I, I know somebody who wore their big boots in because they got muddy yesterday and uh, with those boots that Rob Kelvings wear, he could really get into one of these uh, HQs and uh, push that loud pedal like the rest of the uh, the drivers are doing at the the present moment there. Well, still no change of the times. 54, Gimman still the pole man, Pinkelly second, then Lyons, Holmes fourth fastest, and we've got a change now. Car two, Steve Monterosso has dropped up to, has moved up, I should say, into fifth position. And Davin Harding in the Diet Coke car, he's moved into the top six, so he'll be delighted with that effort. In fact, the times are now changing all the time, and th this qualifying session in its final moments. Still Gimman, Pengeli still second, then Lyons, Holmes, and car three, Steve Ward is now back up into the top six. He's moved into fifth position. So as they continue in the last uh, few dying moments of the 20-minute uh, HQ practice session, time starting to uh, tumble a little bit on the, uh, the screen. Field is spread out, so everybody's looking for that uh, good clear run, a bit of clear air, and uh, get a, a good time, put them up as far up the grid as they can get. There's no doubt about it with going into the chicane. If you're well up on the grid, that's certainly a, a great help. It's going to be frantic action at the chicane for the first time in this afternoon's race. I think you will end up seeing a lot of cars using uh, a lot of kerb. It's going to be a fraught and frantic first corner. Still virtually less than a minute remaining. Gimman still the pole man, but what a great effort by the Peter Holmes team. After having that car repaired, badly damaged at Calder last week, they've re repaired the car it now looks an absolute picture and he's fourth fastest so far in this session that's a that's a great effort by uh, the boys at jv crash well peter holmes was second in the cams racing driver of the year last year so uh, that'll give you an idea of the caliber of uh, holmes uh, runs a wheel alignment business here in uh, adelaide and has been one of the uh, most successful hq drivers for quite some time here in south australia in fact, we should be about to see the chequered flag very shortly. There it is, chequered flag. So uh, the drivers, uh, the drivers that are out on the course remaining, 
still have a chance to possibly, in fact, they have. Car 25, John Pengilly, has come up with a 208.57 and currently is on the pole. Gimmon has been bumped back to third. We'll just check as the final cars cross the start finish line to see if we have any other changes in the times before we give you the top three. But so far, Pengilly the pole man. David Lyons second, Ginman third, Holm still in fourth, then Monorosso and Davin Harding, car number 60. Elizabeth, 3 a.m. Kensington, 9 a.m. Modbury, 4 p.m. Wherever, whenever, you're unfortunate enough to have an accident, One Crash Repairer provides a free pickup, quote, and delivery service, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. JV Crash. And with JV Crash, you have the benefit of over 20 years' experience, all the very latest technology, and a good, reliable loan car, free. JV Crash, for a perfect job every time. And uh, up above the Adelaide Grand Prix circuit, we have uh, three parachutists coming down in these rather breezy conditions. And uh, the lead parachutist is, of course, streaming behind him the uh, lovely banner there from our sponsors for the HQ Challenge, JV Crash Repairs. The, despite the uh, rather breezy conditions, they're going to endeavour to land on the grid, as I understand it. Uh, at this stage, though, it looks like they might be heading for the parklands. A uh, little bit difficult to tell. A uh, little bit concerned about the wind. The uh, he helicopter that uh, they jumped out of a little while ago, they, st they streamed some uh, paper out of the helicopter a little while ago to try and get uh, some idea of the drift. And the uh, first parachutist is down uh, on the grass, just uh, on the edge of the uh, pit's hairpin. We're still waiting for the... Uh, parachutists with the uh, JV uh, crash repairs banner and uh, it looks like they're uh, all three of them are going to aim for that area on the uh, outside of the pits hairpin they're just circling around now uh, heading down I can see the uh, uh, the parachute staff have got uh, a person standing down there with a, a long streamer I guess to give them an aiming point and uh, looks like they're just about going to make it at this stage the uh, HQ's lined up on the grid here. The parachute is now getting very, very close, uh, being buffeted around by this wind. And uh, those of you down on the uh, hairpin on the pit straight, what about uh, when they get down safely, giving them a big hand? Peter Brock, welcome to Adelaide. Thank you. Must be a while since you've driven one of these. Just thinking about that, actually. Last one I drove it had drum brakes and three on the tree. And uh, must have been about 15 or 20 years ago. But um, what about a bit of nostalgia, of course, to see these HQs back here again. It's amazing, isn't it? Sure is. You probably drove one of these to the drive-in back in those days. I did. I did. And uh, I won't even look in the back seat to get, sort of get some memories of what occurred in those drive-ins in those days. But a great old car and uh, a bit of nostalgia, I suppose, for a lot of people. Sure. You're speaking on behalf of JB Crash Repairs. Uh, why did JB Crash choose to sponsor the HQ racing event? Well, JB Crash Repair, of which uh, John Vernick is the uh, managing director, has been really uh, wrapped in these HQs for a long, long time. I mean, he sponsors a couple of the cars. You can see this rocket getting around there. I think he's, at the moment, fourth and fifth on the grid, and uh, I think they're probably looking pretty good. Um, I suppose he likes them because they're the first of the real new look holes. You know, they sort of came out of the blue, and all of a sudden, they're, and they're a bit of a classic nowadays. They're quite a good shape. He likes them. So, uh, Brocky, what do you think it is about the HQ that makes them so popular with the uh, general public? I suppose everyone is looking for, for that, that feeling of, uh, of familiarity or uh, perhaps uh, the feeling that uh, there goes me but for the grace of God. And uh, they look at a HQ and think, yeah, I used to have one of them. Or I could get one. Or my mate's got one. Or something like that. Recognise it. And it's one of the reasons why touring car racing, I think, has had this great uh, amount of interest for probably 20 or 30 years now in Australia. People love uh, seeing cars that they reckon they can buy get out there and know get around the track they also they're very close racing uh, cheap to get on the track a lot of young unknown drivers are getting out there and having a go and I can tell you that a lot of us who are involved in the professional side of it we're actually treating HQ racing a little more seriously than when it first started when it first started we thought oh yeah, HQ's a bit of crash and bash waltzing around the corners you know the old HQ's but they handle pretty well they, there's a lot of driving skill involved and we're looking for young talent amongst the, uh, a lot of the drivers coming through. We're not exactly blind to HQs. Sure. 
I guess JV Crash is the perfect sponsor for this type of racing, judging uh, by the type of driver I've seen on the track. JV Crash, I think, have found their niche in life, really, <laughs> with, with HQ Racing. I mean, not that the Group A cars are going to provide some spectacular action, but HQs, they because you've got a mix of driving skill, you've got that uh, closeness of racing, and funnily enough, the lack of horsepower means that uh, to overtake, you've got to try and do it some uh, fairly undesirable places at times. So JV Crash, yes, I think you can, that probably sums it up for the uh, spectators particularly. It's going to be a lot of fun and games. Well, again, welcome, Brocky, and uh, have a good time at the Grand Prix. Thank you. 10 seconds and there are 39 HQs on the grid for the first event here at the Grand Prix circuit in 1993. It's all been practices up till now and these guys have got a little bit more rubber on the track. We get a green and they're away and it's going to be Ginman who gets away first. Uh, Pengeli there into uh, second. Down through uh, the chicane they come but uh, Ginman's got it all lined up. Uh, Pengeli in the dark car holding on to uh, second. And a gaggle of cars coming under the Foster's Bridge and heading down towards Wakefield Road. Good start there from David Lyons. Almost got up the inside of John Pengelly, but Pengelly fought back fiercely and cut straight across Lyons' nose. He'll sit there in second spot. Then we go back to the two JV crash cars, but still that man, Peter Gimman, leading the way. First of eight laps of the journey, opening up a bit of a gap already as they head now onto the Hutt Street East Terrace area, heading up towards Banana Bend and Stag Corner for the first time. Coming around out of uh, Banana Bend and uh, heading towards the, uh, the Stag, as we say, there are three and four wide in some areas. They line up as they come through the uh, Banana Bend and it's still Gidman leading them from uh, Pengelly and then uh, Lines. We haven't seen anybody come unstuck, I don't think, as yet. Just uh, watching them come down, and they're all uh, being fairly tidy at this stage in single line as they uh, come around Rundle Road or Jones Strait and head down towards uh, Brabham Strait. And I think if we're going to see some action, it will be at the end of Brabham Strait as they go into that hard right-hander into Wakefield Road. Well, we just saw one of the cars, Tony, bouncing across the kerb. I believe it might have been the VIP Motors car of Graham Bolter. But uh, down they come this time, into the hairpin for the first time. It's still Gimman. Pengeli holds sway in second spot. Then it's Lines. Then it's back to Holmes. Davin, Davin Harding. Uh, then back to Monterosso. But they were saying, talking to Baxter earlier, the uh, the brakes are not so much of a problem down at that southern hairpin because uh, all the way down that long Brabham Strait, they get a chance to cool off. Brakes are a bigger problem through the twisty parts of the circuit. Well, round onto the race course uh, part of the circuit and round under the Marlborough Bridge, head up towards the, uh, the southern hairpin, coming round to complete their uh, first lap this time around. And uh, we've still got the car of Gidman, but Penn Gelly on his tail, as we said, he's shone here at uh, the Grand Prix circuit today. And uh, he's very pleased to be up there. Lines in second slot. And have a look at them coming out. Everybody doing everything the right way at the present moment as they come out of the, uh, the southern hairpin and head down under the, the Foster's Bridge and uh, through into the chicane, out onto Wakefield Road. Still Gidman, Penn Gelly, and uh, Lines in that order and it would be one of the JVC uh, crash repair cars next. That would be the, uh, the number nine car, which is the car of uh, Peter Holmes. Then we've got Davin Harding is next. He's up in, in the fifth spot, followed uh, closely behind by Steve Monterosso, who'd be pretty disappointed to drop that spot to Harding early in this event. Good start, too, from Steve Ward, who's uh, performing well, uh, followed up by Anthony Cavallo. So not, not many changes in the field so far in the early going of this, uh, this event, but uh, a lot of charges uh, trying to fight their way through, to through the field and will try to check on the progress of Gary Baxter. Starting from way back in 28th spot, we normally expect to see him at the front of the grid, but uh, Pete still Gimman holding sway at the front and opening up a bit of a gap. Well, certainly uh, uh, one down and seven to go and getting a little bit untidy, some of the tail enders as they go out of uh, Banana Bend. And uh, Baxter has moved up into uh, 29th now as the, uh, the cars are coming out of um, the uh, Stag and into uh, Jones Strait. Challenge here back in the field. We've got a great battle here between Harding and Holmes. Harding has come into that line very tight. Holmes will stay wide and possibly try to cut back as they head through the through the hairpin. But Harding has made the move, so he's really on the charge. He's got uh, JV Crash all in his mirrors. Holmes and Monterosso. Monterosso now really challenging his teammate, trying to find a way past. But Davin Harding is really uh, trying to make a move now through the field. 
Certainly, uh, Harding is another one who's had a, a fairly uh, good year at the, uh, the circuit here at Mallard, but there's a three or four for the tail enders wide coming out of uh, Brabham straight that time. But our race leaders already coming out of the, uh, the southern hairpin again under the, uh, the Foster's Bridge, and it's still Gidman who's leading them through. Just having a look. We've had a change yeah, there with the JV cars. Yeah, we've lost Pit Gilly somewhere, I think, haven't we? No, he's there. Monterosso has made uh, made a move and got past his teammate. Moves up, uh, moves up into yeah. fourth spot. No, Pitt Gilly is there. That's okay. I just lost him for a moment. Well, so right. it's Gidman, Pitt Gilly, and then in fourth spot the 24 car, which is a car of uh, David Lyons. David Lyons. Then it's back to Davin Harding. Then Monterosso. Then Holmes, who is uh, starting starting to drop back. Uh, then back to car three, Steve Ward, and car 23, Anthony Cavallo. Two laps have been completed, eight laps the journey, and the fastest lap going to car 54. That man at the front, Peter Ginman, with a time of 209.88. Not quite down to the lap record time of a 208.59, but uh, still settling in early and opening up a bit of a gap. Certainly, uh, Ginman in the 54 car, as he said, uh, two times had a layoff. He's just managing to stay in front enough of uh, Pengelly as they go down the Jones Strait towards the Maltau. Probably about a four or five length uh, car lead. Pengelly is in a comfortable position, a similar position back then to the third car, which is 24, which is uh, David Lyons. But uh, back further from that, they all seem to have spaced out fairly well. They seem to be respecting these concrete walls fairly well. I think Lyons could be the man to watch, as we saw at the uh, Malala Masters, where he started from 12 and gradually picked his way through the field. Now, he's in a lot better position, although he hasn't got as much, uh, as much time to make up as we've got Monterosso now on the charge. He's moved past Harding and bit of a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a touch out there as they go through. Lent on Harding very hard to try to force his way through. So Monterosso is another one on the charge. He's got past Holmes, got past Harding. Now, Monterosso and Lyons will be the two to watch. Those two are starting to make up ground. A certainly Harding sandwich between the two JV uh, crash repair cars and of course Harding with a new colour scheme uh, as well. I didn't recognise him first up the, uh, this morning but now Harding coming back onto the, uh, the tail of uh, Steve Monterosso there. He wants to get that position back and uh, also the, uh, the blue and yellow car there is uh, right on his tail. That's the, uh, the uh, competition secretary for the HQs who names Steve Ward. Steve Ward. Fastest lap two to Gimmon. He's increased his time at 208.75. Ward sitting there back in seventh position with Anthony Cavallo right on his tail. But look at Lyons. And Pengelly is also now right on the tail of uh, our race leader, Peter Gimmon. We're going to see a great battle at the front within the next couple of laps. So they've completed three of the, uh, the eight laps and the pressure is really on now as we uh, watch them going down to, uh, towards the, uh, the banana bend. Pengelly still holding on to that uh, second place. Interesting thing that uh, Norm Pengelly's father used to be a mechanic uh, for John Walker some years ago with the 5,000, and we looked for a charge with Harding trying to get past uh, Steve Monterosso as he go around banana bend. Not there, Steve Ward also uh, trying to get past the second of the, uh, the JV cars. Look at Harding, he's right on, right on Monterosso's tail as they head down Jones Strait. Very important to get through uh, on the Brabham Strait cleanly and neatly. If you can get the fastest terminal speed through that part of the course, you can be well placed to make a pass for the lead or pass for position at the end of Brabham Strait. Let's try to pick them up now as they head down Brabham Strait. And look at them, they're weaving all over the course. Still Monterosso there in second, but Harding, uh, back in fourth I should say, but uh, Harding is right on his tail. Let's see if he'll pull out to try to make the pass this time. Not this lap, holds sway back there in fifth position. But it's still that man, Peter Gimman, virtually once a year racer. Comes out, wins last year, track record, and one getting very badly out of shape as they head on to uh, Brabham Strait. So as we uh, pick up the leaders, how's those times looking, Paul? We'll see if we're going to get a, uh, a new record here as we watch them come around the, the back of the uh, circuit, past the Foster sign there. And it's still the, the car of Gidman's leading through, but the dice between uh, Steve Monterosso and uh, Davin Harding at this stage as they go down onto uh, the pit straight there. That's where all the action is happening. Well, we've got very close to a record. Gidman's now to a 208.60. The record is 208.59. So you can't get much closer than that. But uh, David Lyons has come up and clocked second fastest with a 208.70, so a tenth of a second behind. 
Then uh, 25, which is the, the Pengeli car. He's uh, six tenths of a, sorry, six hundredth of a second behind. Harding is also clocking some good times too with a 2.09.21. Harding just taken uh, Steve Monterosso there, so Harding what up into uh, fourth place now. But it could be a run at the front, Paul, because it's uh, still uh, Gidman Pengeli uh, in those front two uh, position, and uh, then the car, the 24 car of uh, David Lines, and it still could be a run to the line. But look at that uh, action pack field back behind uh, Harding Monterosso. And Anthony Cavallo also putting in a great performance. He's got past Steve Ward, and is now right on the tail of Holmes. Of course, that car of home was repaired from his accident at the uh, three-hour enduro at Calder last weekend. Possibly, uh, he'd be working very hard to try and get the car perfect, but there'd have to be a couple of little imperfections, a couple of little glitches left over from last weekend, and maybe they'll start to show out throughout the course of the race. But have a look at them. They're spread out all over the back straight. No one looking, uh, no one looking to let anybody pass. And have a look at Harding and Monterosso. They're virtually right over by the uh, by the concrete on the wrong lanes. They swap back over now to uh, try to make their way around the course. But Gimman still holding the lead. He's looking pretty comfortable at this stage as we've got one gone around. Wayne Pink in 46 from Claire, the uh, the minor 10 at Claire. 46 is um, actually his um, Gimman's teammate. which is Peter Nolan. So we have so a yellow flag out there around the malt house somewhere. Sponge is coming around malt house, so we have a yellow uh, flag out there. That's uh, Wayne Pink, but he's got it around in the 46 car. He's underway. Nolan, I'm sorry, in uh, 46, not uh, Pink. So as we pick up our race leaders once again, and we have five of the uh, eight laps completed. And door, we're doing, starting to do a bit of curve hopping now as we come through the yeses. So uh, it's still Gidman leading them through from uh, Pim Gelly. And then in fourth spot is still the 24 car of David Lines. And, and we have a new track record as well to John Pengelly, so he's not going to give this one up without a fight. His time now at 207.85, so three laps only remaining, and he's not letting Gimman run away with this. He's going to put the pressure on throughout the course of this event, and Gimman will want to be very careful. One slip, and he's going to have Pengelly all over him. Have a look at them slinging through Banana Bend. They started off fairly sedately, Paul. Now they're starting to, to throw them down. They know that they've uh, completed five. It'll be six next time around. They can uh, start uh, putting a little bit of pressure, perhaps punishing their brakes just a little bit more than they uh, were. But Gidman, so far, having led them from start to uh, finish, and then it would be uh, the car of John Pengelly. Pengelly and Lyon. So it's really a race amongst these three. You can't see uh, unless something drastic happens. This trio have opened a big gap back to the next car, which would be Steve Bonarosso, who's got back past Davin Harding. But the three of them running three astern as Neil Corey gets uh, very, uh, very sideways and out of shape as he enters the, the Brabham Strait. Still only a couple of laps remaining, but there's a big pack behind that leading trio. We'll try to check the gap next time around. Bonarosso is still, still in fourth. Then it's Harding, then Holmes, then Cavallo. Back to Steve Ward will be next. But it's still Gimman. He's got a three or four car length gap back to Pengelly. Just having a look coming through uh, Brabham there. A couple of the cars getting fairly uh, sideways. Gilbert Motorbody's car getting uh, crossed up a little bit there as he came out. But uh, certainly the front three uh, leaders are uh, going quite strongly at this stage as they uh, follow each other. It's still uh, Gimman there from Pengelly. And in 24, uh, David Lines. Well, that track record now standing off Pengelly of a 207.85. Lines second fastest, a 207.99. Gimman's time a 208.02. So all those three cars running under the existing, existing track record. Only two laps remaining. Time is running out for John Pengelly. Can he bridge that gap up to Gimman? Time will tell as they make their way onto Hutt Street for the penultimate time. Next time round, they will be, when they cross the start-finish stripe, they will have one lap to go. But Gimman, certainly Tony's looking pretty safe at this stage. That's a fairly good lead by HQ Stand. As we said, they're standard six-cylinder six holds. Uh, you can't do anything. The cam camshafts are controlled. They run seven and eight-inch tyres, Ducaro tyres uh, from North Terrace tyres. So it's uh, a fairly even uh, uh, 
amount of work you can do them. A lot depends on how you set them up and the driver ability. And certainly at the present moment, Peter Gidman, who uh, hasn't had a, uh, a drive for all the season as we lose number seven going into a banana bend, and that is uh, Dave Melling. And he goes right round. Number 12 also goes round, which is uh, Michael Roll. So he goes round. Traffic managed to, uh, to get by. Car yeah. 12 has gone around there. Yeah, I flicked him off halfway through. It being... So the roll still uh, stationary there as they pick up the race leader. And uh, it's still the, uh, the car of uh, Gidman's at this stage. Pengilly's starting to close that gap though. He realises that it's crunch time now. Only one lap to go. Peter Gidman hard on the brakes. Racetrack hairpin. Wheels the fifth car 54 around onto the start finish straight for the final time. Pengilly is now right on his tail. He's shaking lines loose a little. Across the start finish stripe they go into the chicane. Pengilly really has the bit between his teeth. If anything's going to happen, this is going to be uh, the lap that it will happen with the Gidman leading from Pengilly. Not by much, but uh, probably about two, two lengths down they uh, go. To, uh, to Wakefield Road, heading towards East Terrace, a right-hand uh, turn there. Gimman made a little mistake through the chicane that last time round for this final time. Got up on the curbs, that has allowed Pengilly to close that gap a little bit. He's right on his tail. You can see him really throwing the car around as they head onto, uh, onto Hutt Street, East Terrace for the final time. Up they go through Banana Bend. Gimman holding on for, for the life of it. Pengilly chasing very hard, throwing the car as hard as he can through Banana Bend, up the Stag Corner, onto Jones Strait. This is going to be a do or die uh, effort uh, as they go down uh, uh, Brabham, uh, sorry, uh, Jones Strait this time, and they've got that big right-hand sweeper out of Jones onto uh, Brabham Strait, using the uh, the ripple strips on the edge, and uh, as they come down there, Gidman's giving it everything, but Ben Kelly's hanging on to him as they come down, heading down towards the uh, far end of Brabham Strait, this is where we would expect to see a move, I think, if we see anything at all. And uh, certainly Pengelly pulls out to look for run past to Gidman. Can he get it as they get down onto the turn? Gidman moves out wide. Pengelly has slipped through, taken the lead, gone too wide. Gidman moves back side by side as they come out of that turn into Wakefield Road. They come back onto the race course entry. And it's still Gidman who just manages to hold them off at this stage. He's run and wide. Pengelly's up in the inside. Gidman's run wide as they come back under the Marlborough Bridge. Pengelly, the man who's holding the lap record at the present moment, head toward the Southern Hairpin. Final time, this is it, Peter Gimman, crunch time. Can he get that lead back? He is led virtually from start to finish. Runs wide on the through, and Pengilly's run wide. Checkered flag is out. Drag race to the final line. Pengilly and Gimman, Gimman and Pengilly. Checkered flag at the ready, and it's, oh. Pengilly, Pengilly has the arm out the window, punching the air in the light, and I reckon he might have done it. We'll check the timing as they've come across the start-finish line. It is, in fact, car number 25, John Pengelly. What a fantastic performance as we Steve. Steve, looks like Steve Ward, I think, way off the track onto the grass as they make their way down to the chequered flag. But Tony Grove, John Pengelly, what a fantastic performance. Really got the bit between the teeth and chased him down hard. And that was a heck of a race. And if that is any indication of some of the racing action we're going to see here at the Grand Prix this weekend, it is going to be one fest of motorsport excitement. Morford Vale, 10 p.m. Salisbury, 2 a.m. Mount Barker, 4 p.m. Wherever, whenever you're unfortunate enough to have an accident, One Crash Repairer provides a free pickup, quote, and delivery service 24 hours a day, seven days a week. JV Crash. And with JV Crash, you have the benefit of over 20 years' experience, all the very latest technology, and a good, reliable loan car, free. JV Crash, for a perfect job every time. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just seen the JV Crash Repairs HQ Holden Challenge, which I'm sure would have stirred feelings of, of uh, nostalgia in some spectators. And it's my pleasure now to introduce the director of JV Crash Repairs, Mr. John Verdnick. Good afternoon. 
Congratulations to the organisers, fellow sponsors, and all concerned to assist in making the Adelaide Grand Prix possible. We at JV Crash are proud to be part of the Adelaide Grand Prix, the ever popular HQ Challenge. This was a great race, and JV Crash are proud to be part of this event. I would like to congratulate all drivers who participated in today's event. Thank you. Thank you, John. We'll ask you now to present the trophy to the winner of the JB Crash Repairs HQ Holden Challenge, John Pengelly in car number 25. And John, you might care to uh, say a few words. Well, it's a pity the uh, Peter Holmes and Steve Montrose they didn't ring win today, but. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, happy to see John uh, Pengelly win today anyway. Thanks. Well, firstly, it's, uh, it's the first time standing one of these microphones. So, <laughs> so I'd like to thank uh, John Verdney, certainly for putting this event on, or sponsoring the event, I should say. Uh, my all-time sponsors, Salisbury Motor Records. And, uh, yes, Mr Cook. <laughs> and uh, Gilbert Motor Bodies, Sprint Graphics, and to uh, Leanna, my father. That's for you. Thank you. Well done, John. And uh, Mr. Verdick uh, will now present the trophy to the second place getter in car number 54, Peter Ginman. And third, David Lyons in car number 24. And now we'll ask the JVC Crash Repairs girls to present the drivers with their bottles of champagne.